It's fine. So I keep saying that every time I do this, I find a new way to mess up. So uh, you just saw me f- discover a new way of messing up today, which was not being able to share my screen. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, I believe we are live. I can hear an echo, which means uh, I can. I'm on YouTube. I'll quickly introduce our guest today. So for today's podcast, uh, I'm interviewing Ahmed and Andrea, who impromptuly agreed to do an interview about their uh, fifth position solution. Both of them are Kaggle masters, Kaggle competition master in a uh, so masters in a much more difficult category uh, than I have been competing in. Uh, Andrea is Crow Dog. You might recognize him by that name. And Emmerd uh, goes by his name on Kaggle. We'll be talking about the feedback price solution, uh, their fifth position solution. So they finished in the money zone, as you call it on Kaggle. And we'll be talking about that uh, in the later half. So uh, thanks. Thanks so much again for joining me today. I'm super excited to learn about your journey and, and your solution. Yeah, it's great to be here. But uh, I, before we begin, Ahmed and I have a question for you, if it's okay. Yeah. Please. How do you feel? I, I, you, you saw me cry on the... And how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, you saw me cry on the live stream. I was, I was literally overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, thank thanks, you, thanks. thank you for having me. Also, it's a great honor to be here. No, I'm I'm super excited to learn from you. Uh, and as as I was saying, I always keep finding new ways of messing up. So you saw me discover a new way of messing up today. Hopefully, no other issues would come up. Uh, I I'd love to start by asking you, how did both of you get started in data science? How did you find that passion? Uh, maybe Emmett, we can start with you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, how did I start with data science? Uh, actually, back to high school, I was like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do for a living, but I knew that at that time, I really like mathematics and computer science. So I was like doing just mathematics and computer science, playing game on computer. So I liked that thing. And after that, I, um, I had the opportunity after the, the high school to apply for a scholarship to Morocco uh, when I was studying, uh, I was studying their uh, mathematics and computer science. So I had the opportunity to, to learn programming, to learn more uh, about statistics there. And after two years at the university, actually, I had the opportunity to, to apply for an engineering school, uh, which is in statistics and economics. And there, I really learned a lot, a lot about statistical modeling, about machine learning, about data mining, and, and also about computer science programming. And it was at that time that I, I believe that I had this passion uh, for data science. And I knew at that time that I wanted to do data science. Uh, I wanted to, to improve my knowledge in, at that, in that field. That's that's awesome. I'll I'll come back to you. I'll, I have a follow up question, but uh, Krudok, I would I'd love to ask the same question. I saw your thesis was uh, in histopathology, which is uh, from what I know a Kaggle competition <laughs> similar to a competition. So how, when did you find your passion for data science? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I would say it all started in high school. I started to attend this algorithmic contest, you know, such as top coder, code forces, and similar. Uh, but in the end, I decided to study medicine actually. And after a couple of years of medicine, I decided to switch back to computer science. So I ended up finishing my master's in computer science. And there, it was the first time I found out about deep learning, neural networks, and data science. And I think when I seriously started to do data science was maybe one year ago or something when I started Kaggling. And... That's actually a funny story how I started to do Kaggle. I wanted to start for such a long time. And I started my PhD. It's supposed to be in computer vision. And I was, you know, deciding what should I make a paper about. And then on Kaggle, there was this first competition I attended. It was called Human Protein Atlas by like an amazing team from Sweden. 
And they said the top teams will be invited to um, join them in writing an uh, article uh, which is going to be published in Nature Methods. And this was crazy, you know, to publish there from a small town, Zagreb, Croatia, you know. And anyway, this was the motivation. It was, you know, a huge risk for me, you know. I didn't know how to, I never used a pre trained model, never used PyTorch. I only did a few courses in deep learning AI. Then I ordered the uh, RTX 3090 and, you know, went all in. <laughs> that's, that's awesome to hear. So you bought the most expensive thing in, in our world at, at that time. I told you, all in. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask more about your Kaggle journey in just a second, but uh, Ahmed, I. I believe, did you complete your studies in Africa, you mentioned? Yeah. I so, am I'm originally from Mali, but uh, after my high school, actually, I had good grads. So I just applied for scholarship from Morocco. And then I I went to Morocco, to, to the university there, to, to study uh, mathematics and computer science. Yeah, so the first part, I mean, the first part was in Africa. And then after my engineering degree in Morocco, I applied for for master in France, actually, for data science master in France. Yeah. Uh, so I I want to ask this respectfully because uh, from what I understand, India and Africa have had similar challenges. Like we didn't have good internet for a long, long time, and we faced yeah. somewhat similar issues. Did you did you face such challenges as well? How did you overcome these? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. If at all. And again, uh, I, I ask this respectfully, so not, not trying to... Yeah, I think it me. was maybe when I was in Mali. Uh, at that time, I I didn't have internet connection, I guess. But there was some... I, I forget the name of the tool, but it was it kind of was like you have access to to all uh, Wikipedia contents and, on, and oversight, but it's not using internet. Hmm. But you still have access to them. So, I've used uh, a similar version. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I forget the name. It was a long time ago. So. But we were using this uh, for searching for, yeah. It was not using internet, but just uh, using this tool. I forget the name, yeah. So how did uh, you, Emmett, and also Crowdog, both of you, improve your programming skills? Because many people underestimate you also need to like be better at that, to be good at machine learning. How did you improve that? Uh, should Emmett, I go maybe first? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, like I said, um, at high school, I, I always liked computer, actually. Computer, computer science. So when I first uh, discovered programming on C, I was like, this is crazy. You you just have to to write how a machine can, can do things, and he will do it by himself. So that was crazy, and, and I was really passionate about it, and... How did I improve it? I mean, maybe it's not at school, but uh, the passion that I have uh, for for programming uh, make that I I always uh, read things in on internet uh, about programming, participating on some challenges, programming challenges that that allow me actually to improve uh, my 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 coding skill. Yeah. Awesome, uh, Crowdog. How about you? Yeah. So I think there were two major things that influenced my programming and coding skills. Uh, as I said, at high school, I did this algorithmic contest a lot. I would spend like the whole year of fourth grade just doing this and nothing else. And because of this, I was able to get an internship at Microsoft. So this was the first time, you know, I felt, you know, I could really do something good. <laughs> and then after that, uh, I was searching, you know, how to improve even that. Then I found... When I started Kaggle, I started to learn extremely a lot. So the last year, I just learned a lot from so many good Kagglers from your podcast, and especially from Chris Diot. I just want to mention him. He, I love that guy. He shares so much on Kaggle. Just amazing. So uh, thanks. Thanks for the shout out as well. Um, both of you, how did you, uh, when you first discovered Kaggle, how did you I, I think everyone gets overwhelmed, but after that feeling, how did you approach Kaggle and how did you improve on Kaggle? Uh, my case, in my case, it was at uh, uh, in my master degrees actually in France. 
uh, we had the competition in class competition actually, and uh, that was my first uh, competition in Kago. And this competition, uh, I I mean, uh, for two months I was the first. Uh, I was in the top of the leaderboard, and I I really enjoyed that. You can just uh, make your model, you submit it, and you see your score on the little ball. You can see the other guy also on the same little ball. And you can see that if you are doing well or, or not. <laughs> and it's, it's really, um, I mean, it's really uh, passionate. It, it became quickly addictive. I mean, it's, and uh, in, at that competition, actually, I, uh, the first two months, I was first. And but at the end of the competition, maybe the last three weeks, I didn't have time to compete. And and actually, all my 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 colleague in class, they they just go, and I was just failing to the from the little board. It was really frustrating. That's that's the the the, the bad feeling in Kegel, you know. Yeah, I think that's that's who, that's where I really uh, enjoy competing on Kegel, and that's where I. I became maybe addict to Kegel, maybe not not really at that time, because after this competition I I stopped Kegel, and uh, because I had to apply for jobs stuff like that, and and after that I I I started again, and this time I was just uh, uh, joining competition, looking what people are doing, not really competing, uh, till the NFL competition where i really had time to compete and i was uh i was really this was really a good competition yeah the nfl competition and in this competition i, I had time to compete so still the beginning i was competing with uh over guy on the competition and this competition was really awesome because the the data was not uh, uh that obvious to use you have to maybe uh, every every calculator have to to set up how he will use the data because uh, it's not just like you have a, a tabular data where you have all the the columns and then you have a target that you should just model. You have to set you you have to set this up to to your uh, the way you understand the problem. Then and yeah, this was really good competition. And at the end, I think that. Uh, the Zo team won that competition, and they had an unbelievable. I, I, I still <laughs> don't believe how how they came up with this solution. That was just crazy, actually. They they came up with an architecture of neural network that uh, that was really amazing. Sorry, I was just uh, sharing the screen and showing that you had to actually predict players on the field. Um, yeah, yeah. Why did you pick this competition? Uh, many people struggle with. They think I've I've learned computer vision. I want to do computer vision competition. I learned NLP. I want to do that. Why, why NFL? Yeah, this was uh, really because I I really love sports, football, everything. But I I had no idea about uh, NFL. I didn't hear about it before this competition. But since it it was about sport. I, I said that yeah, this is definitely one to one competition to join because it's about sport. I'm gonna have fun. I, I'm gonna play with the data to understand. I'm gonna predict something. And also, it was a competition where the private data was not released. So you have to make your model, and then you will just uh, predict, and then they will use your model and Kaggle kernel uh, to predict on on, on future game. So you will have to to watch the game, and after you will see your model performance. So that was awesome, actually. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Uh, coming back to the winners, quick mention. Uh, I had also interviewed them uh, at that time on the podcast. So this was uh, Philip Singer and Dimitri Gordev. Uh, both of them, I call them lions because they used to name their team the Zoo. Uh, they they yeah. also amazing calculators. Philip was former number one in competition. Definitely, these guys—they're uh, amazing. Actually, I—I I still don't believe. I still don't understand how they came up with uh, this neural network architecture. It was just awesome. I think they were just—they—they uh, they were the 
only team to use uh, maybe neural network from scratch. The other one, maybe they use transformers or even tabular data approach. Yeah. And this was also when like transformers weren't so common on Kaggle. Like two years ago, they were somewhat common, but not the like just now it's just a baseline, even transformer yeah. models. Definitely. And and even for image competition for image competition now people are using transformers uh transformers everywhere even on tabular data transformers so <laughs> so it's it's kind of like it's the future now uh, awesome uh Krudok, I'd, I'd love to hear your story how did you get addicted to kaget yeah, yeah so it happened immediately during the first competition the human protein atlas competition as I said, our main goal was to just get uh, published with the team who organized the competition in Nature Methods. And actually, you can see uh, my teammates. So uh, the second one is Nicola. He's a, uh, actually, he has a PhD in computer vision. He was kind of, let's say, supervising me. I was doing the coding. And the other two is, is are actually, so it's my sister and her husband. So at that time... That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, they were medical students. Now they're medical doctors. And why we decided to go with this competition is because the data was, I wouldn't say noisy, the data was weakly labeled. So I, I knew we didn't have any chance competing against the big guys uh, using, you know, in ML. But since the data was noisy, I, I knew if we could spend enough time, you know, we had a small chance of achieving something. In the end, it's turned out great. And after that, you know, Kaggle is an addiction. Everyone knows that. How was the feeling of getting a goal in your first competition? Uh, I mean, it was crazy. So I waited for the results at 2 a.m. I mean, I was super lucky. The correlation between the private leaderboard and public was good because I would probably be overfitting at that time. I wasn't that good in, you know, CV and stuff. Uh, but I don't think I actually understand it at that time. What does it mean to get a gold medal? So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I was pretty lucky to get it, I would say, you know. Uh, what, what do you think was the reason behind your awesome uh, initial success? Uh, so I, I'm sure a lot of work went to, into it. But for anyone who's new to Kaggle, there's this immense learning curve of just understanding how to submit, uh, understanding all those things. What was your secret? Yeah, I, I, you know the phrase, uh, learn fast, fail fast, or something like this. You know, I would try a ton of things and I would learn a lot in a really short period of time. And I think I started the competition, let's say, two weeks after, as soon as my computer arrived. And I, I worked nonstop. I worked all day, all day, every day. I would say you have to be a bit crazy when you start and just invest a ton of time and read a lot, read a lot, especially from discussions. And Andrea, maybe you can continue and Ahmed can add to this, but uh, do you remember when you first approached a competition? For me, I still do this. <laughs> I go to uh, notebooks, sort by best score, change hyperparameters and submit, and then just pray to God I don't face a shakeup. What what else did you do? Uh, when you said you were reading discussions, how are you spending time? How are you implementing those ideas? How are you practicing that? Yeah, so uh, each time before I start a competition, I go for all, I read all the discussions from the last post to the first post. I read everything. Then I decide if I'm going to join or not. I try to see, you know, if there's going to be a good correlation with the leaderboard uh, and the CV and the uh, I try to estimate how much time is it and, uh, for example, is there anything uh, extra I can add with my knowledge that's an advantage? For example, I like to compete in uh, competitions related to medicine. And, for example, uh, the last competition, the not the last, but the one I'm attending now is, yeah, this one, NDME. <laughs> Actually, I only started doing NLP because this is, uh, it's done on medical text, on medical history. And how I started, I just went through the Hugging Face course in one week and just did nothing but that. And after that, I went through the best kernels and tried to implement them. So I always re-implement it from scratch. So I would say 95% of uh, the code is mine and maybe 5% I would just copy from, for example, the scoring metrics. 
I think this always helps. You only get to know the code if you implement it yourself. Sorry, just to elaborate uh, on that, if you could, um, when you say re-implement, do you read a kernel, close it, and then uh, implement it? When I started, I would leave it in a tab, and all of the time I would be looking in that direction yeah. and not in this direction. Yeah, that one, that one, the second option. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emmett, how, how about you? I, I'd love to know how did uh, you... When I first start competition, I always uh, go to the description page, page actually, and I read what the competition is about and if it's about something that I, I really like, for example, sport or or maybe now I'm getting uh, more interested to computer vision. So I will spend time understanding what is the problem, what uh, they wanted to do. And if I understand that, I will go uh, to the data page actually and I, and I will read everything. What is the data? Uh, uh, what do we have? What can we uh, use? And, and after that, I go to the evaluation page to see what is the evaluation metric of the competition. And after all, I, I start reading about the discussion on, uh, on, the, on the forum, but I, I, I will never read everything that is in discussion. Like for that. <laughs> I will just <laughs> maybe, maybe see the most upvoted discussion, what are they about, maybe. And then if I read this and I like the competition, then I, I join the competition. Then yeah, that's how so I you start. Would, you would read the meme thread and the CV or LB <laughs> score thread, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, okay. Uh, jo jokes aside, uh, coming back to the questions, I'd love to know what made both of you sign up for the evaluation prize competition where you, again, uh, gold medal. So for the audience had. Let me hop over to the competition. And if you go to the leaderboard here, you don't have to scroll much. And you don't have to scroll past the money range also. Uh, this is known as the money range because you don't only win a gold medal, which is one of the hardest things to do on Kaggle. You also get some cash prizes. So you can see them on the fifth position with zero shakeup, which means that they were on the same rank on the public leaderboard and same rank on private leaderboard. Uh, so just wanted to emphasize on uh, this feat by your team. Uh, what what made you sign up for this competition? Yeah, Ahmed, you can go first. <laughs> I can go first. So when we were actually there were a competition before this uh, feedback competition. We were with Cordoc. We team up at that competition, and it was a pit finder competition. And when at the end of this competition, uh, we saw that uh, there were this uh, NLP competition about feedback price, and uh, we were discussing about it with Crodoc. Uh, ever we, we have to go to this competition or, or not. And Crodoc was a bit afraid at the beginning because <laughs> he didn't know, he doesn't know much about NLP, so he, he was a bit afraid. And, and after that, we read, read the competition. And, and yeah, it looks like this competition was really a good competition because the data was high quality when I read all the discussion uh, stuff. And also there were a uh, good correlation between CV and Little And there were also a public kernel uh, that was doing really good. It was a kernel shared by Abhishek actually. And and I I, I thought that it, it may be maybe easy to, to improve from that public kernel. And that's why I, I joined the competition because I, I knew that the data is high quality. And also uh, there were uh, a public kernel sure that with a baseline where I can learn a lot and where I can try to, to, to improve actually. So that's why I, I joined the competition, yeah. Yeah, Ahmed asked me to join the competition and I actually said a few times, no, I'm not doing NLP. I've never done <laughs> NLP. But then this NBME popped up. I started, you know, going hard with NLP. And then since this comp I started the competition from the beginning and it lasts for three months and I was like, ah, I can join maybe feedback with Ahmed. It's going to be fun again. And it, then it was, it was just crazy, you know. The thing is, it looked like it was going to be easy to improve on Abhishek's code. It was yeah. not. It was, you know, <laughs> we couldn't get anything out of it at first for a long time. Um, 
so crudo you didn't have nlp experience before am i did you have uh, any experience with uh, working on nlp competitions uh no i i joined before this competition i joined two nlp competition i guess it was tweet sentiment competition and also jigsaw competition but tweet sentiment competition i was like i just joined the competition i read everything and i didn't had time to compete so i just joined it maybe submit two things or or, or maybe three notebooks and then that's that was it actually so uh after that the jigsaw competition i joined the last week uh of this competition but i didn't really know much about nlp i i on i i only know tfdf stuff like that so but i went through the uh, the kernel uh in this competition i read everything every code i downloaded everything i try to understand uh what they are doing uh what can we do in in nlp and yeah it's that way i, I learn a lot and also i i read a, a lot of um, top solution in previous competition and at that time uh at that time there were no transformer transformer was wasn't born at that time they were like using uh tfdf or or maybe embeddings from um uh from gloves or or over or, or over world to vex and then use an lstm head to to that so i learned a lot from this top solution and then in this competition i tried to to use uh, that knowledge yeah. and um, and in feedback competition i feel like uh, now i feel like yeah i'm ready to go for for uh, to spend a lot of time on nlp competition i feel like now i i knew a bit about nlp so i can compete yeah uh, the the follow up question i had for both of you is uh, so i just bought the hugging face book uh, it's it's there on the shelf but a noob like me would just spend 3 months reading the book or just studying the course so like how, how did you pass through the course and immediately start implementing it because to me it's like very scary i just like keep doing the course over and over and over again and never make any progress how did you make that jump <laughs> I mean in my case I what I really uh, like is um yeah I, re- I I like reading books but not that much I mean if I wanted to learn something I always try to find something where I can practice it for example uh to learn NLP I will go on Kego uh reading about a uh, previous top solution on NLP competition what method they use and and I I try to to implement uh, that so so then i can quickly understand what is the problem what is uh, the method they use for for this kind of problem yeah uh crodok how about you yeah i would say go for the course don't spend more than one week but one week of extreme focus and then try to reimplement a high scoring kernel in one competition i think you know you have to have a context before you do some coding and then you you can even go coding before you feel ready you know just make something work that's uh, that's also awesome my advice um so uh, i I'd, i'd love to now start understanding the competition and i'll i'll try to explain it please correct me wherever i'm wrong so i found this discussion that explains it really well and the goal was to understand <laughs> such text and explain uh, which part of the text was a uh, argument uh, or other based on other categories you would have to mention stuff like that as you can see these were texts by high school students so this one is like a funny example that someone had shared but most of them uh, were reasonably good as i understand and the evaluation metric for this one was uh, like so so you had to point out uh, the id and the class followed by prediction string so these would be the i believe the id of the words so where the word would start and end uh, no the id's were actually the id's of the words that you would um classify as belonging to this let's say sp- sentence span okay uh, sorry so, sorry about that so um continuing further just opening the data tab uh, these were the different categories that i believe you had to predict from 
so all of these classes yeah so basically you will get a bunch of texts that were essays from students uh, from 6th to 12th grade and you would uh, have to predict word spans from this text for i think it was seven categories for yeah. example usually uh, each essay would start with a lead like a leading sentence or it can be more sentences less sentences it will have multiple claims in it and claims will be supported by evidence and at the end you usually, you usually will have a concluding statement and there were a couple of more you could use you you could uh, find so when when both of you saw this competition uh, did you team up during the initial days or towards the later half so actually uh, our uh, team leader kosi his name is kekiller on kego he started the competition very early um, and then i joined later i think i was far the latest to join uh, and i he kosi actually said when when i was trying to join the team that uh, it's my risk to take because he was about to give up <laughs> and then i think we pushed him a bit to still continue competing yeah. and then we got it was so funny i got you know first time we got the score higher than abushek's kernel it was like 0.690 i got it like something similar and then the same day kosi gets also the jump also jumps for the first time and a few days later i jump again he jumps again and it was going like this until the end of the competition <laughs> it was so yeah, crazy so uh, when when you saw the competition uh, did you approach by abhishek's kernel or what what was the first thing that came to your mind on how to get started on this one yeah uh, in my case i definitely started from from the abhishek kernel actually i tried to understand uh, how he approached the problem and because in in this competition is not really obvious actually even if you have you can even if you have prediction for, from the model you don't know how to use to decode this prediction to to the target you you have to submit on on key also i i try to understand his uh, approach actually how he, he approached the problem and after that i try to to implement his code again and then run it if to see if if I will get the same result as he has on Kaggle, and it was scoring the same, and at that time now it was quite difficult to to improve from 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 that kernel as a product mentioned it. So yeah, for me I started from from the Abhishek kernel. Yeah. Yeah, I also started the implementing Abhishek's kernel, and then at some point uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronoun pronouncing it correctly. Hank, I hope. Mm -hmm. I correctly he shared a lot of stuff so i was trying to implement a lot of things he said and at, at some point he renamed his uh, team name to the Berta is king and that that's when the magic started to happen for us <laughs> so uh, was that the hint to you to pick up deberta and start using yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he actually published all of his cv scores and little world scores so it's also quite fascinating because I was passively reading and I think he also mentioned this was his first, one of the first NLP competitions and he was also learning himself. I would never say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we also, because he shared a lot. Even if you, you spend time uh, understanding what he is sharing, trying to implement it, I, I guess you will get better score on, on, on the letter book because this guy, he shared a lot on Kaggle, actually. And even he, he shared his code, actually, I think. At the end, he shared his code. <laughs> so you can even pick up his code to, to try to improve from that. He also used to, uh, when I started my first competition, I remember he would publish presentations literally with slides and like arrows pointing on how to run stuff. So he, he's been sharing a lot of stuff for a long time. Crazy. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Abhishek, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, so with the competition uh, set up out of the way, uh, anything else you'd like to mention before we start understanding your solution? Mm -hmm. Nothing comes to mind, really. Yeah. 
I think uh, one of the struggles that I was, as I was reading, many people were initially really struggling to set up a baseline. And even your team, I believe you mentioned, were out of the bronze until the last few days. So uh, maybe maybe if you could talk about that and what what made you not give up for for that while? Yeah, I, actually, I think we were like 60th place for a long time, something like that. It was like mid silver zone or something, and it felt like it was impossible to increase the score. So uh, I think I implemented like a hundred things, and I was saying to uh, saying to Ahmed just the other day. So the, out of the hundred things I try, usually five things <laughs> work out. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a five percent success rate. That's why I said fail fast. Uh, anyway, but the crazy thing was uh, for us, blending wasn't working. We were yeah. not able. So actually, uh, when we merged our models together, we, we would get the worst score. Then we would use the 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 code the without. Single, yeah. And um, I think maybe this is why at the end we found uh, how to, we focus on this and we found that something that can really help us to combine our model prediction. Yeah, and I think, in this competition, I think it, it was maybe the most difficult thing, I think. Yeah, this was the most important thing of this competition. My guess is if there were more te teams that figured how to blend models better, you know, it would be... I don't know where we would end. If if Hank published this, who knows what yeah. would have happened? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, someone is asking this question. Uh, what helped you uh, improve your score eventually? Yeah, Kosi, our team lead. <laughs> so so what happened? We were always scoring about, around 0 0.7, 0 0.7 something. And he was trying to blend our models and he was trying to use VBF from ZF Turbo. Turbo. And the funny thing is he tried and it failed. He tried and it failed. We were always getting this notebook exceptions. And he said, this is my last submission. If it fails, I'm not going to try anymore. I give up. <laughs> and then it actually passed his last try. And it was, I think, two days before the end or something. We got 0.71. Okay. And at that time, we just, it was 9 p.m. We went to a call. I think we, we went crazy. We were just, for two hours, we were just screaming on the call. Yeah. And actually, the submission that uh, succeeded on Kegel, uh, the first uh, submission of WVF, it was uh, like just one fold of each model. So it was like just using two checkpoints. Two models, actually. And it was like, we had this model, I think, maybe uh, three or, or maybe five days before the end of the competition. It, it's the same model we keep until the end, but we use just this VBF thing to, to improve our score. And and Kosi's third attempt uh, using this uh, VBF, he tried only using it uh, with um, only two models and blending the, these two models together, and it's really scored fast. I think it's, it doesn't even take uh, one hour to submit it. And it was like we, we was at uh, 0705, uh, maybe, and we jumped uh, at 0701, I think. Yeah. And with only using two models, so we realized that at that time that, yeah, we found it something that can really improve our score, yeah. But there was another problem then. We had no no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to blend everything perfectly. So uh, just to point out, you mentioned you jumped two point seven one at that time. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, just for the audience, point seven zero nine is private. On private, on private, the scores are a bit lower for everyone. Okay. Sorry, on public, Sorry. On public. Sorry. Uh... So point seven zero nine is right in the middle of silver, and point seven one starts to hover in the upper half of silver and right outside bronze. Yeah, yeah. but this was with only two checkpoints, so we know if you <laughs> blend everything properly, we had a yeah. chance for a good position. So in those in those two days, how did you crunch everything together? <laughs> I, I I'm sure you didn't sleep, but <laughs> how, how were you like <laughs> maximizing your output? Uh, Ahmed, you can share the day before. I can share what happened the last day. 
uh, the day before I didn't sleep, actually, when we found this uh, WVF thing, because when we submit only uh, two models, I was like, I, I went mad. I, I, I was like, I was reading then everything about uh, VBF. And I saw that there, there were, uh, the, in previous competition, TensorFlow competition, it was like image segmentation or detection. And <laughs> in that competition, people were using uh, VBF thing. So it, since it's working for us, I just uh, went there to read everything about this competition how they use VBF, what is the trick to do with VBF, things like that. And I found that uh, actually you can even improve uh, from VBF using threshold after using VBF. And that was shared uh, by Chris in that competition. So I was really excited to, to, to come and use that also to, to, to our solution. So yeah, I didn't sleep that, that night. I was just refreshing Kaggle page seeing the, the score of our five false blends <laughs> until the morning, actually. I was reading everything until the morning. And at the morning, I submit something and I go to the bed, yeah. <laughs> that was crazy, yeah. Yeah, I think Ahmed is really good at blending models and ensembling them and getting a, you know, proper CV score locally. He's way better than me on that. <clears throat> so I completely depended on him with that part. Actually, what we do a lot, so we, we have, we call each other a lot using Hangouts and he would just code and I would look at his code and comment on it because he codes really fast. And uh, the funny thing that happened on the last day was, which we, we had five submissions. I think when we discovered VBF, there was like 12 or 13 submissions left. And on the last day, out of the five submissions, two of them uh, threw an exception out of RAM, <laughs> one of them time, timed out, one of them had an error in the code. <laughs> so it gave like a completely terrible score. And the last one that, I don't know, it finished probably a couple of hours before the end of the competition was actually the highest scoring. So, you know, we were, we were co constantly refreshing the browser, you know. Yeah. And that's, it's really, I mean, you can't, you can't even do nothing. You are just reading things waiting for for it to score then you can't do nothing you are just sitting watching refreshing the page to see if it's score or not yeah it's really crazy yeah but you know there's also a good thing that we didn't discover this blending method uh from the beginning because we extremely focused on you know tuning the hyperparameters for our models in the end we only used diberta and diberta x large large and x large and i think we tweaked it really well it got a really high CV score. So I think if we found out this blending method before, maybe we wouldn't have such good scoring single models. Yeah. Got it. Um, but no, that, that does sound very intense. And I can only imagine what was going on. Maybe maybe this is why the non-inference, uh, non-kernel competitions are a bit better because you just submit the CSV file and you get like instantly an answer of how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to quit the competition every second day. I was writing to Ahmed, no more, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was really funny also about when we found that VBF, we saw that uh, in TensorFlow competition, uh, Chris Deot was competing there. So, And in this competition, he shared a, a, a topic about, he made a benchmark between image segmentation and uh, uh, NER yeah. uh, approach in, in NLP. So it was kind of obvious for us that uh, his team is using this VBF. So we went to the over competition and TensorFlow competition where he shared his solution about using VBF doing threshold. So at the end, uh, yeah, it was it, it, this discussion. It was at the beginning of the competition, actually. So here he mentioned image segmentation and, and NER in, in NLP. So he made the benchmark between them. So it was then... I think more intuitive for him to use uh, image segmentation uh, tool, which is VBF, and to apply it to this competition, which is uh, NER approach. Yeah, and we we have done the same actually. That's that's really fascinating. Just to elaborate on that, I'm reading the discussion, and it says uh, NER uh, is like image segmentation for text, and you were talking about the. TensorFlow competition where you had to detect uh, cots, which is, I think, some starfish. And you had to, like, uh, 
produce segmentation on that so it's like really interesting how you're combining those two ideas through this discussion post where you're taking an idea from image segmentation and bringing it to nlp because it's somewhat similar yeah and this is why i think maybe it's important to to pay attention on what is going on on kaggle uh, discussion and also on kaggle kernels because sometimes maybe they are not all useful but there are some discussion that are definitely important if you if you read them and you you understand what is the idea what 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 they wanted to share and you pay attention to that i definitely you're going to find something that you can use you can add to your solution yeah one question around not giving up one thing i've learned is all uh, great kagglers find this period of struggle where no idea is working and suddenly all breakthroughs come like sometimes all together at once sometimes in like spaces what made you not give up like when when nothing was working when it was so frustrating yeah i think it was teaming up you know uh, one thing is to give up uh, on your own and one thing is to give up on your team so you know a, a crazy thing happened i would actually take, take took vacation for the last couple of days and before we discovered this blending trick i was thinking oh my god this guy took a vacation if we get nothing i'm going to feel so guilty and i can't stop coding now <laughs> <laughs> i felt he was a bit crazy but in the end it was the right decision yeah <laughs> i think also teaming up definitely because when for example there were a lot of time where where i got stuck and i i had the feeling to stop but at that time maybe crowdlock find something and is tweaking xx large deberta <laughs> because he really loved big models and yeah tweaking <laughs> so he found this thing and it's improved cv so i it's give me feeling that yeah we can do it we can still improve from from our baseline yeah i think teaming up definitely yes so ahmed has uh, two uh, a6000 gpus so when we i, I like the, the big, big models and i usually give him the opportunity to train them <laughs> thank you <laughs> he's wearing the set by hp jacket where uh, who have yeah. provided him the awesome gpus and video was also kind enough to send me one a6000 oh. although i don't make it, make as good use of it as you do so crazy um coming to your solution now i would uh, love to summarize this so if you could please help me understand and summarize the solution and how did you uh, uh, finish on this approach sorry so uh, maybe uh, both of you want to run through this or should i Uh, yeah, I think that one is the better choice for this, right, Ahmed? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, this competition, as we said at the beginning, we we started uh, from Abhishek baseline, and on his baseline, he, he was uh, doing NER. Actually, he was approaching the problem as NER problem, and then we we go for NER problem, and then we try to improve from from that, and uh, but at the end, actually, we we had two setup. the first setup was uh, using ner and using a span segmentation also so and the second setup was like using the same uh, setup like abishek has done but this time uh, on only using uh, 10 10 uh, classes as target because everyone was using i guess uh, 15 and we we go for for 10 classes because we saw that uh, uh some some places uh, doesn't really overlap on on the data so yeah maybe crodo can can explain well this this second setup yeah yeah the second setup is uh, actually my part uh, so in actually first i started to use 15 classes but then if you look at the data uh, most of the classes don't uh, won't come one after another for example for for claims they, they could be let's say connected so if you would predict only one you need to protect the beginning otherwise you would get a too big chunk and you would get a false positive and miss out on multiple claims but for uh, other five classes or i think it was other five classes uh, you could have done you could have just predicted one token 
it was really rare, rare that there was a more more of them one after another. So actually, I was predicting 10 classes. So it was a bit different than the first setup. And uh, I think, yeah, I just saw a typo. Actually, I was uh, predicting using uh, 512 tokens only and using a sliding window. And for me, it was a, a bit of a surprise that this, the Berta worked better than long former or bird. How, how are you f discovering these models uh, apart from Hank sharing them? How did you decide like uh, on trying long former or Deberta? How did you decide which model to start with? Yeah, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah. <laughs> So uh, Kosi, who made the first setup, most of it, uh, he didn't rely on offset mappings. While my part relied on offset mappings. For, so for my part, I generally tried all the models that had <laughs> the ability to produce offset, offset mappings. So, sorry, what is offset mapping? Uh, so basically, it says for each token of text, what's the position in the initial string, okay. like the beginning and end of the characters. And so some models have it and some don't. And Makes so I, I only tried the ones that have it. <laughs> yeah. And, and I also think that, yeah, Hank shared a lot. And as soon as he shared something that is working, we, we go for that. We, we test, it and test it and see if it's working with our setup or not. And long former, uh, we took it from, from Abhishek Kernel. It's, yeah. Makes sense. Um, Anything else you want to cover in the setup? Uh, yeah, the first setup, as uh, as uh, Krodok mentioned it, it was uh, a Kekilor setup, actually. He had the idea to not only predict NER, but also to predict uh, the segmentation. It means, for example, you predict for each token, uh, uh, for each token, you predict the Discord type, and also you predict at the same time. It, if this token is the beginning, or it's the inside or outside token. And then uh, we will just rely on this uh, segmentation part uh, to decode the output of the model, actually. Because everyone was using uh, NER prediction to make decoding to the probability to the uh, span, but we used only the, the segmentation part to, to, to identify the beginning and the end of, of the span. And then uh, we use the NER approach to to, to know if this pen is claim or or evidence or rebuttal, for example. Yeah, and I think it was important to set up a good, you know, cross validation strategy. To uh, and how do you split up the data? And uh, there was a post again from Chris. Uh, he he mentioned that there's like 15 topics. And uh, Ahmed replicated his code. So we were splitting first the data by these 15 topics. And soon after that, someone shared it's, I think it was Hank. It looks like they, they didn't shuffle the data. So actually, it seems that uh, if you go through the examples, it was, you know, first the first topic, like a thousand examples, then the next thousand was the second topic. So actually, I went through manually through the texts and you know, <laughs> divided them into properly 15 topics. I think Chris made, uh, in his code, there was one mistake that was clustered a bit differently. So we fixed that and Ahmed made a you know, really good uh, split of the data. I think which was important to you know, squeeze out the most of the models. Yeah. And I think in this competition, the data was really high quality. So it was kind of easy to, to set up a cross-validation, uh, I mean, uh, and to, to, to observe in a correlation between our local CV and, and little bow, actually. So yeah, we used this uh, Chris uh, cluster, which we uh, changed a bit, like uh, Kordak mentioned it. And then we used that uh, to make uh, our CV. Thanks, thanks for clarifying that. Um... And after that, uh, maybe you can also cover post-processing and ensembling. So uh, you use the WBF method, which you learn through the segmentation world. And I think, let me find Chris's uh, solution because he gave a nice example of how this works. Yeah. There you go. 
So uh, for also for the audience, WBF stands for uh, Weighted Box Fusion, and uh, just this example should give a better idea. Yeah. For example, in this example, if you blend the model by just the probabilities, maybe you will end up with only uh, coding on, not the 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 mm. blue boxes that you have. So definitely blending model probability was not the best idea. Using something like uh, uh, WVF was really good because it's kind of, uh, yeah, I think Chris really explained it well here. So ap apart from that, um, anything you want to mention here? It looks like uh, for other models, you were giving equal weightage to all of them uh, most of the times. Yeah, we, we didn't have much time to optimize this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But there is something good, actually. When we found uh, WVF, uh, Kikiller, our teammate, who is really awesome, he made a, a topic at the beginning of this uh, competition. I don't know if you can go to the topic, but he, he, he made a topic uh, which showed the relationship between uh, the competition metric and IO, actually. Maybe you can, I, I don't know, uh, I owe you maybe metric or competition metric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, 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 he made the relationship between uh, the competition metric and IOE. So from that, we can quickly understand that uh, when using VBF, Usually you 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 threshold by zero point five I guess, and if you translate to this competition, uh, zero point five is like uh, zero point thirty three actually. So so we didn't really uh, tweak this this threshold. We we only rely on this, and it was good. Yeah. Yeah. As so we did... yeah we we didn't have time to test a lot of things. So we only use this uh, to to, to make the threshold. We tweaked it at the end, but this nogs failed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last day. Did you go back and uh, try any new ideas? See if you could have like finished on the first position, or were you done? Like you were very happy with the result, and you didn't want to try more. Yeah. So what I did, I just used uh, my setup of models a smaller version and we could achieve practically the same score. So uh, I guess if we blended it a bit better with Kekulers, we could even get much more. Yeah, I think also, yeah. And also, I think uh, there is something that was working for the over team, like the first team, they used light JBM to, to post-process their prediction. And actually, we used that. Uh, but the thing is, like, we use it, it's improve our CV score. But when I submitted, the score was worse on Leaderboard. So then we just go for over idea. We just uh, we didn't test it two times. Maybe we should we should actually because it was like an over magic. But yeah. So it didn't work for for us for the first attempt, we had an error in the the kernel because it was giving so much lower score. And I was yeah. saying for the last 10 days of the competition, we should use LGVM. We should use LGVM. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it was actually a good idea, but it maybe we, we made some mistake on the on the inference kernel. Yeah. Definitely, I think. So maybe if we if this was working for us, maybe we, we could even achieve more more than what we had actually. And the thing is I, I cannot think like it's it's like you it's a bit lucky actually because we test this and the score it score worse and i guess if this light jbm works then we 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 couldn't be able to find vbf i think we will only focus on this light jbm thing and i think also if for example we submit it and it didn't score nothing for example make an error or something like that we will spend time to understand what is the mistake on the kernel but this time it, it just like it scored lower than our baseline so we say no it's not working to the literal let's focus on something else to try to improve to, to to improve from there for example adding lstm head something like that and then uh we didn't go back to the the light jbm again uh, yeah. 
so, sorry if, it, if this is a noob question, but uh, in this competition, you were predicting uh, the start and stop words. So how would how would the LGBA model work here? Yeah, the thing is, you you are not using the light JBM to predict the start and the end, but you are using light JBM to predict if your prediction is correct or not. For example, uh, if your prediction is correct or not. For example, you, you, your 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 model predict that uh, start uh, this pun is claim, and if you predict it's it's claim, uh, then because of the competition metric, you will make a lot of error. So if you post-process this prediction by something that can say you, uh, this prediction is not correct, then you drop it. This prediction is correct, so you keep it. The light GMM idea was like this. You have some features for each one. For example, you, you, you have the beginning and the end of, uh, of the, the spans, and you have a probability for, for each token. For example, in this span, you predict the average probability is uh, 0 0.5. And then uh, the span begins with this work. It ends with this work. You have a lot of features from the span. And then you use these features to predict if this span is correct or not. That, that, that can allow sense. you to, to, yeah, that could allow you to, to improve your, your score, actually. Thanks, thanks, thanks for clarifying. Um, I have one more silly question. So, uh, about batch sizes, why do you, uh, can you explain why were small batch sizes more useful? My understanding is the larger, the better. Just like you have two A6000, so like fit the largest model you can, probably half of the characters won't be able to do it. Yeah, I don't have a good answer to this. So <laughs> I just <laughs> tried a lot of things and it seemed that using four or batch size two seemed to work best. One was big, a bit worse, and eight or more was definitely worse, at least for our setup. I'm going to guess it depends on the model, and it depends on the problem, and it depends on how you set up everything. Yeah. Okay. M maybe if you would ask someone with more experience, they would tell you why. But I think if you compare it to computer vision, there's no batch normalization and stuff like, layers like this, so you can use smaller batch size easily here more easily than in computer vision. Yeah. I'll have to only, I'll only be able to ask from the other four teams that are above you and maybe they also won't be able to answer. <laughs> um, so, so Sorry about the <laughs> silly joke there. Uh, so I believe we've almost covered all of the points in your winning solution. Anything else you want to mention or highlight apart from what we've discussed? I don't know. I, I, I would just, you know, say uh, uh, if you're not an experienced Kegler, I consider myself really a beginner still. Uh, you need to, you know, try out a ton of things fast. And this is something that can go real well for you. I mean, as I said, for me, it works in 5% of the time. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I also think that teaming up is really something really good because uh, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, and and if even if you get stuck, you have a teammate that will encourage you to to do more, to to try something new. And I think yeah, teaming definitely is something. It's something good, and we had a lot of funny uh, when we team up and and we tried a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, and I would say keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, another question on that from the audience. Uh, any tips on increasing productivity of a team when you team up with uh, other people? Uh, I'd say, you know, get to know your team uh, teammates, you know, go on. We have a lot of uh, video calls and, you know, this helped us a lot. We brainstormed a lot together. So... Can can I ask another personal question? So many people also, uh, I believe, feel this way. People like me are just scared to team up because I'm like very slow with approaching ideas. I like take half an hour to unpack a list comprehension, half an hour to unpack a dict comprehension. 
for for such people do you advise to team up still because i'm like if i if i join your team crow dog or your team emmer i i'd just be slowing the team down and i'll be the heavyweight who's just asking silly questions and not contributing so what what advice do you have for such people no i i would say it's the opposite you know i i'd say each of us boosted the team way more than than what we could have done on our own so i would yeah. suggest team, teaming up for everyone you know Okay. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll find the courage. At, at, at least I think you you're going to learn a lot a lot from your teammate actually. And as Crodox said, we brainstorm a lot, so we share a lot of idea, we discuss it and we test. For example, when 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 Kekiller came up with this uh, WVF thing and he said that yeah, I found something maybe it will be useful here. I said, yeah, 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 it makes sense. Just test it, try, try it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't believe it at the first time, you know. I was like, yeah, try it, try it, because I had the same experience using Light JBM. It boosts our CV, and I was like, no, I'm not confident anymore. I don't think really maybe <laughs> post processing can improve our score. So when he came up with with the WVF thing, I said, yeah, try it. It makes sense. And the first attempt actually uh, is submitted. As Crowdock said, it's failed. And I went to the Kaggle kernel and I saw the, the prediction on the sample uh, test that we saw when we submit, we have just the sample uh, test. And I was like, I was uh, going through this sample prediction to see if it makes sense from our previous submission. And I was like, no, this thing is not working, but yeah, test it, just just try it. We, we, we're gonna see if it work or not. And then when he submitted the third time and it scored, I was like, Oh my God! This we found something. <laughs> Now the competition is going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's so much more fun if you team up. For example, when we uh, found this blending method, you know, you can't scream on a call on your own for two hours. You know, you should team up. Totally <laughs> different experience. Yeah. Uh, also, maybe maybe that will give me the courage to uh, team up in the future. Um, I always end on this question. What's your best advice to someone just starting out on Kaggle? Have fun, you know, <laughs> and don't spend too much time if you have a family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think if you really want to now learn, Kaggle is really a good platform actually to learn data science. If you spend time reading uh, top solution, trying to implement them by your by your own, I mean, it's not that obvious that you you just read something you you implement it by your own. But when you try that, you struggle, and then you learn a lot. I think yeah, yeah, Kaggle definitely. I think this is a good way maybe to start Kaggle and go for the learning. I will say maybe not for not for the winning. Maybe just go for learning to learn things. What are the other guys doing? What I can do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's that's an awesome answer. To end on, I'll quickly share both of your profiles. So also, uh, shout out to K Killer who didn't join the call, uh, but he's yeah. K Killer on the uh, Kaggle world. Uh, you can find him, and you can find his LinkedIn on there. Also, his GitHub. Yeah. You can find Amard on. Uh, Kaggle from where you can find his LinkedIn profile and you should connect with him on LinkedIn. You can search for Andrea on Kaggle as Crowdoc. That is C-R-O-D-O-C. Uh, I love that username. And from there, you can also connect with him on uh, LinkedIn. Any other platforms you want to mention? Oh, I only use LinkedIn for uh, LinkedIn and Kaggle. Awesome. Same thing, uh, yeah. Same thing for me, yeah. LinkedIn and and Kaggle, yeah. Okay, uh, awesome. Audience, again, these will be linked in the video description as well, or you can just find them on Kaggle. Uh, go to the leaderboard. Don't scroll too much. They're fifth on there. Uh, find them through there and connect with them. Thank you so much again, uh, both of you, for your time and for sharing your solutions. It was really amazing to learn from your solution, and uh, thanks for the insights. Thank you. Thank man. you. Thank you, Sanjay.